Who was John Lennon? Um, he was one of the Beatles. Uh, for me, John Lennon uh, is live. Brilliant in his own right. How did he die? I don't know. He shot himself with a shotgun. Heart attack. Airplane accident. Was it for cancer? Stabbed by uh, a fan. Was it drugs and drink? And people rape me because my mother was a single and mother. And look how strong you become because you of Right, I'm strong. You'd murder for $10 million? Yeah, I don't know the guy. So you'd murder an innocent man? Yeah, why not? Who was John Lennon? Um, he was one of the Beatles. He sings one of my favorite songs, Here Comes the Sun. He was a member of the Beatles. Uh, for me, John Lennon uh, is live. John Lennon's from the Beatles. My favorite musician. Singer in the Beatles? Who was John Lennon? The singer of the Beatles? He was a member of the Beatles. The man that has a late night show? Brilliant in his own right. There's nobody that can write a song like John Lennon. John Lennon was the president, the 14th president of America. Come on. <laughs> He's a guy who formed the Beatles. John Lennon was born on October the 9th, 1940 in Liverpool, England. Early in John's youth, his mother had an extramarital affair and became pregnant. His aunt complained to the social services and consequently, John was raised by his aunt who sent him to a local Anglican Sunday school where he sang in the choir. In 1956, John formed a rock group which evolved into the Beatles and gained unprecedented worldwide fame. On March the 4th, 1966, John conducted a casual interview with the British newspaper in which he said, we're more popular than Jesus. The story is picked up two weeks later by Newsweek without controversy. But later that year, the American teen magazine, Datebook, printed the quote once again, and this time it created a firestorm. Suddenly, radio stations in America's Bible Belt were banning Beatles music, and the national news media were showing clips of teenagers smashing and burning Beatles albums. There were even threats on the band members' lives. John was bewildered by all the hostility, because certain things he said seemed to indicate that he sincerely thought it was true. International television and radio had given the Beatles instant international popularity, and the Beatles were passionately loved by hundreds of millions throughout the world. In the United States alone, an estimated 73 million people tuned in to watch The Ed Sullivan Show in 1964, when the group made their first US television appearance. But perhaps there's another reason Lennon thought that the Beatles were more popular than Jesus. Could it be that John's words were motivated by the spiritual climate in the UK at the time? Generally speaking, traditional church services in 1960s England were a little dull, with dry hymns and monotone priests and ministers, who preached lifeless sermons to a group of sad, elderly people. They often sat in a cold stone building that was appropriately surrounded by a graveyard. And there you have Christianity from the perspective of a young and vibrant John Lennon. It was dying, if not dead, and Jesus Christ was simply an interesting but historical figure that had little relevance to contemporary British youth, who were going wild over the Beatles. It seemed that the average British teenager was about as interested in British Christianity as a toddler was in studying Shakespeare, written in Pig Latin. The Beatles, of course, have proven to be one of Britain's prime exports. They have brought in more foreign exchange than many industries. After all, they are an industry unto themselves, and the Queen saw fit to reward their economic contribution to the nation. The award entitles the Beatles to put the letters MBE after their names. On August the 11th, 1966, a meek and still mystified John Lennon held a news conference in Chicago. A reporter asked, Some teenagers have repeated your statements. I like the Beatles more than Jesus Christ. What do you think about that? We meant more to kids than Jesus did. All religion at that time. I wasn't knocking it or putting it down. I was just saying it was a fact. And it sort of, it is true, especially more for England than here. No, I'm not saying that we're better or greater 
or comparing us with Jesus Christ as a person. You know, I just said what I said and it was wrong or was taken wrong and now it's all this. In his book, The Gospel According to the Beatles, Steve Turner said, It was really quite frightening and they wanted to cancel the tour, but they knew they couldn't. They were under obligation to the tour promoters. And when he made his apology in Chicago, the band's press officer told me that John was actually in tears before he went in to make the apology. However, others think that John knew full well what he was saying because of the context of his quote. He said, quote, Christianity will go. It will vanish and shrink. I needn't argue with that. I'm right and I'll be proved right. We're more popular than Jesus now. I don't know which will go first, rock and roll or Christianity, end of quote. And so people have come to different conclusions on the issue. Just months before he died, John Lennon told Playboy magazine, Everyone talks in terms of the last record or the last Beatle concert. But God willing, there are another 40 years of productivity to go. I don't want to die at 40. Tragically, John Lennon died at the age of 40. How did he die? I don't know. I don't know how he died. He was stabbed. Stabbed? Yeah. I, I have no clues. Don't know. Uh, Let's go with drug overdose. No! <laughs> no. Plane crash. Stabbed by a uh, friend. Was it for cancer? Uh, an airplane? I don't know. Was it a safari? How he died? Plane crash? Airplane accident. He shot himself with a shotgun. Did he suicide? Stabbed? Was it drugs and drink? Heart attack. Drug overdose? Killed in a New York elevator, I think. How did he die? No idea. John Lennon was shot by a crazy maniac who was obsessed with Catcher in the Rye. Uh, outside of his apartment building by a man whose name I actually can't remember at the moment. Probably just as well. Yeah. He was shot in the back by a deranged fan who hours earlier had had John autograph his record album. The killer pleaded guilty to murder and was sentenced to life in prison. Years later, he admitted having considered murdering Johnny Carson, the famous American talk show host, and actress Elizabeth Taylor, among others. John Lennon happened to be the most convenient. He said that he murdered him so that he could become famous. I, wherever, wherever John is, I have to go. Oh, yeah? That's heaven, and that's what I do. So where's John Lennon now? <laughs> Hopefully he's in above heaven. Us. He's above us. Yeah. Where do you think John Lennon is now? You think he's in heaven? I think he's definitely in heaven. There is no heaven! I said, it. I said if! There is no heaven! Okay, how do you know? Do you think he's in heaven? Of course. I think I'll meet John Lennon up there. Do you think heaven exists? Yes, I do. What about you? Absolutely. Okay. I do. I think heaven exists. I'm not sure if it's heaven or hell, but there's something else. Yes. Yeah. Of course it does. Yeah. Yes, I do. I'm not sure. Uh, it's up there. Do you believe God exists? No, I do not believe Are you in an God. atheist? No, I am Buddhist. A what? I believe that so I have all of the powers that anybody who calls God, God, I have all of that within me. I was born with it. Sure. It's called the universe. Okay, I've got a scenario for you. Find your apartment is next door to a bank. You find a secret trap door leading into their vault where there's billions of dollars. So much money, they haven't got a clue how much is there. You can take $2 million and you will not get caught for sure. Would you take the money? Yes. What about you? I think about it first. Okay, think about it. Two million dollars. Yes, I would. Yes. Would you take the money? Honestly? Of course. I'd take it and give it to charity. Yes. I probably will be tempted, but I won't. I won't do it. If it was from the Federal Reserve, I may take the money. Would you take the money? Yes, I would. Would you take the money? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm on you camera. I'm, I'm supposed to say no. Would you take the money? Yes. We would all three do it together <laughs> at the same time. Yeah, we would all take the money. One. We're six million dollars richer now. If I would never get caught, yes, I would do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Of course. Would you take it? Probably would. Take off to Mexico. Would you take it? Not for myself. Spend half of it, buy a house. Who would you take it for? Friends and family. Disappear a couple of months to come back. Would you take the money? Yeah. <laughs> would you take it? Yes, I would. And what about you? Of course. Would you take the money? Yeah. And what about you, Jay? Of course. You would? No hesitation? Would you take the money? Yeah. Of course. Of course.
course. You wouldn't hesitate? No. I've got another dilemma for you. This lady wants to get rid of her husband. She says he's a rat. All you have to do is drop one tablet of arsenic into his coffee when he's not looking. You will get away with it, you'll not get caught, and she'll give you $10 million cash. Would you do it? Yes. What about you? Do it for free. Don't cut it out. <laughs> no, I would. I called my buddy Ronnie to do it for 20 bucks, and I'll take the rest. Would you do it? No. Nah. Everyone has their price, so yes. You would, you would kill him? Yes. You seem tempted. I mean, $10 million is a lot of money, and I like money. For $10 million, you'd become a murderer. For $10 million, he'd become dead. Would you do it for five? Yes, of course. One million? Yes. So you'd murder someone for a million dollars? Yes. Well, let's say she says she'll double it to 20 million. That's going to set you up for life with a very rich man. Would yeah. you do it? I'd do it. I'd do 20 million? It. Yeah. If somebody offered me $20 million to kill somebody and I was never going to get caught, I probably would do it. I mean, who wouldn't? I wouldn't. Well, I guess you have morals and I don't, right? Most definitely. You would do it? Yes. You wouldn't hesitate? No. I'm thinking about it right now. I wouldn't think about it later. I'd do it. Would you do it? Yes. Would you do it? Yes, I would. You'd murder for $10 million? Yeah, I don't know the guy. And he's a rat, apparently, so why not? What say she's lying? Not my problem. Just give me the money. What about you? <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay, no hesitation. So you'd murder an innocent man? Yeah, why not? Most definitely. I do it. Yes. Do it for free. Yes, I would. Yep. Yes. Yes. You just need to drop one drop of arsenic into his coffee, and she'll give you ten million dollars. Would you do it? No, sir. So where do you get your morals from? How do you make a choice like that? Is it because you're brought up that way, or is it a belief in God, or something like that? It's a belief in God. Why not? It's it's taking a human life. It's it's the most precious thing we got. Would you do it? Nah, man. Can't do that. So where do you get your morals from? My morals from my mother and my father. I can't kill nobody. That's Why not? Ten million dollars. Because a life is worth more than ten million dollars. Okay, it's twenty million dollars. Nah, I wouldn't kill nobody. Would you do it? No. Would you do it? No. I could do it, but my heart won't let me. I'm not gonna kill this. I don't know that guy. Why not? Because that'd be murdering somebody. You're taking somebody else's life when it's not your place to take a life. Yeah, so what? You give money to charity. Yeah, but I, I gotta kill someone in the process. I'm not gonna kill him. You're not gonna get caught. It's all right. Where do you get your morals from? Myself. So why wouldn't you do it? Because it's a moral value that I have to deal with for the rest of my entire life. Would you do it? No, I'm not a killer. Are you afraid of facing God on Judgment Day or something? Yeah. Is it because you've got a belief in God? Yeah, I do. So that comes into it? Yes. I'm not going to kill nobody, but I'll be Robin Hood. So you don't mind stealing, but you wouldn't murder? Yes. Notice in these cases what it was that separated those who would commit murder from those who wouldn't. It was a God-given belief in moral accountability. When a nation loses that restraint, that guiding conviction, it will become lawless and ultimately spin out of control. And there's nothing that gets rid of moral accountability like atheistic evolution, the belief that there's no God and that we're the descendants of primates. You're a descendant of an ape. Yeah. That's what you believe. Yep. It's uh, no proof for evolution, it's a belief. There it is. What are you going to say okay, about Okay, please tell me the proof for evolution. What was in the beginning, Christian? Uh, started as a supernova exploded. Where did it come from? Uh, space. No, where did the supernova come from? You know, they don't really know yet. Who uh, doesn't know yet? And nobody. So you don't know what was in the beginning, so you're in darkness about that. Okay? I mean, in the beginning, it was just darkness. Where did that come from? Uh, it's darkness. No, it's darkness. <laughs> where did the darkness come from? Uh, nowhere. Maybe like a different universe or okay, parallel let's, dimension. Okay, let's go with your belief, okay? Okay, yeah. There was a big explosion, a big right. bang. Right, And rock came off the big bang. And what did that become? Uh, it wasn't rock. It was like, it was uh, minerals and things like that. Fusion. Minerals? And where did they come from? They came from a supernova exploding. And they're very complex minerals, aren't they? Uh, yeah. So who designed them? Uh, you don't know. Nobody designed them, it just kind of... Just happened. Science, you That's know. called blind faith, that's a belief. So, okay. this rock with minerals on it came to this earth. Right. And then over millions of years, how long did it take to produce males and females and 1.4 uh, million different kinds of animals, insects, birds, and fish? Billions, billions of years. So you think rocks yeah. produced giraffes, elephants, horses, cows, dogs, uh -huh. cats, human beings, all... Got it. All was male and female. Yeah. All 
producing out their own kind of seasons, the air, the sun, the moon, the stars, the fruits. All that came because of a big bang in space that nobody knows how it got there. That's called blind faith, and I'm a skeptic. I wouldn't believe it if you paid me. See, you've got a big problem. In the beginning was God. He said, let there be light. And God created man in his okay, own image. Okay, but who created God? No beginning, no end. He created time. Who says who? He He's that? eternal. Says He's it. <laughs> and he has the authority in his word to say, I am the Lord, I change not. The Bible says immortal, invisible, the only wise God. And Christian, you have to face him on judgment day whether you believe him or not. That's, that's and you've lied and stolen and blasphemed and had sex out of marriage, you've sinned against God. You're in big trouble and I don't want you to go to hell. John Lennon didn't believe in the theory of evolution. He said it was garbage. Listen to his words. I don't believe in the evolution of fish to monkeys to men. It's absolutely irrational garbage. They set up these idols and then they knock them down. It keeps all the old professors happy at the university. It gives them something to do. Everything they told me as a kid has already been disproved by the same type of experts who made them up in the first place. Do you think you're a good singer? I hope so. Yeah, I think so. How would you rate yourself as a singer between 1 and 10? As a singer, probably 7. 7.5? Uh, 10. 11. For the land of the free. <clears throat> Early. We tend to overrate ourselves when it comes to our singing ability, and we do the same thing ethically. Let me ask you a question. If there's a heaven, are you going to go there? Are you a good person? I guess we'll see when we're done here, huh? Yes, I'm a good person. I like to think so. And what about you? I think so. Well, do you think you'll end a heaven? Good question. Okay, let's put that to the test. How many lies have you told in your whole life? About a hundred. Thousands? Maybe about a million. About a billion. Too many to count. What do you call someone who tells lies? A liar. Definitely a liar. Have you ever stolen something? Never. It's not one of those lies, is it? Definitely not lying on that one. Yeah, sunglasses. You want to change your mind? No. Nope. Never taken music off the internet that wasn't yours? <laughs> now, have you ever used God's name in vain? Probably, uh, yeah. That's called blasphemy. It's very serious. Yes, I have. You ever used God's name in vain? Yes, sir. What about you? Yes, sir. Multiple times. Oh, my. Uh, yes. We have to bleep you out. Because that's using God's name in vain, not giving it due honor, using it in place of a cuss word. It's called blasphemy. Did you know that? It's oh. very serious. Oh, OK. Now, Jesus said, if you look with lust, you commit adultery in your heart. He said, Whoever looks upon a woman to lust after her has committed adultery already with her in his heart. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? Yes. Yes, I do it all the time. Definitely. Uh, yeah. I did this morning. I'm looking at a woman with lust right now. I'm doing it right now. <laughs> of course. Yes. Yeah, everyone does. Look right there. No. Are you homosexual? Oh, no. So here's a summation of your standing before God by your ambition. You're a lying thief and an adulterer at heart. So if you face God on Judgment Day and he judges you by the Ten Commandments, you're going to be innocent or guilty? Probably guilty. I'll probably be guilty. Well, the way you put it, guilty. I would be guilty of more than just those. Okay. Fornication, sex out of marriage? Yep. So guilty. Heaven or hell? Hell. You, you're both right. If you died today and God gave you justice, you'd end up in hell. My sister passed away yesterday, so believe me. Like I said, I had to go see her eventually. So would you go to heaven or hell? Um, I don't know. I don't believe in hell, though. So. Well, if I didn't believe in the electric chair and a judge sentenced me to the electric chair, it doesn't make any difference what I believe. And hell exists. If God is good, he must punish people like Hitler and rapists and thieves, but he's going to punish liars and blasphemers and fornicators. So you're in big trouble on Judgment Day. Very true. So does it concern you that if you died today, you'd end up in hell? No, a little bit. Now, do you both still think you're good people after looking at the Ten Commandments? I think I am deep down inside. I know I'm a good person. According to God's rules, I'm not. Yeah, sure. Guys, this is serious. Don't you realize we've just seen how wicked your heart is? You'd murder for money. You'd violate your conscience. You'd take another man's life. Still think you're a good person? No. Does it concern you that you'd end up in hell if you died today? It would concern me, yes. Do you know what God did for guilty sinners so we wouldn't have to go to hell? Died on the cross. Okay, now, do you understand that? Yeah, he gave his life for us. But if you're a good person, you don't need his forgiveness, do you? That's why it's so important to acknowledge your sins and realize that your sins in God's eyes are very serious. Doing all the good works in the world won't wash away your sins. But there's good news. God provided a savior, Jesus of Nazareth, who suffered and died on the cross, so you wouldn't have to go to hell. But God can legally dismiss your case because your fine's been paid by Jesus 2,000 years ago. What you've got to do is repent 
and trust alone in Jesus. You know how you are trusting your own goodness? I'm a good person. Transfer your trust from yourself to the Savior. God will give you everlasting life the second you do that, but you have to let go of your beloved sins. You have to turn from them. God can proclaim you innocent and righteous because your fine was paid for by another. God can let you live forever because of what Jesus did on the cross through his death and resurrection. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Okay, now that's the issue we're talking about, everlasting life. So if you want to trust in yourself and in your own goodness, you're going to be in trouble on judgment day because we know by God's standards you've really sinned really bad and you're under his wrath. But if you repent and trust in Jesus Christ, God will forgive every sin you've ever committed and grant you the gift of everlasting life. Does that make sense? Makes sense, yeah. Do you know what you have to do to receive that gift of everlasting life? No, don't. Repent and trust alone in Jesus. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. When do you think you're going to do that? Uh, when I pray tonight. I would do that right away. <laughs> right away? You mean that? Yes, of course. What say you die before tonight? Oh, wow. Then I guess when you leave, I'm going to pray. You going to think about this? Definitely, actually, yeah. <laughs> so when are you going to repent and trust in Christ? I think pretty soon. Right now. You mean that? Yes. Yes, I do. When are you going to do that? Um, now. <laughs> are you serious? Yeah. Why not now? You could die in the next hour. Your heart could give out. I could die two seconds from now, so yeah, I should so do it right now. The earlier the better. I'm going to think about this. Yeah. Please do. Do you have a Bible at home? Y yes, I do. What were you going to say? Uh, I was going to say, oh, yeah, I'm just as surprised that I ran into you today, you know? Yeah. Does this make sense? It sure does, yes, sir. Do you have a Bible at home? Yep. Do you believe what I'm saying? I do. Eye opener. You're blowing my mind here, man. You're changing my life here in 30 seconds. Not many people know that John Lennon once made a commitment to Christ, but his motive was for happiness. He said, the point is this, I want happiness. I don't want to keep on with drugs. Explain to me what Christianity can do for me. Those who come for happiness rather than to repent are soon disillusioned. Ah. 
And cows don't drink milk, they drink water. Okay? So don't trust yourself, Cindy. Trust God. Oh, no. No, no, no. Yes, yes, yes. No, no, no. Yes. I will only trust myself, whether I get it right or wrong. According to Christianity Today, John wrote a letter to another Christian ministry in which he again expressed regret that he had said that the Beatles were more popular than Jesus. Steve Turner went on to say that in 1977, John became deeply moved by NBC's broadcast of the movie Jesus of Nazareth and told his friends that he had been born again and was a Christian. Unfortunately, his professed conversion didn't last. John eventually changed his view on Christianity and wrote an angry and extremely blasphemous song called Serve Yourself. Tragically, John Lennon was the victim of a gospel that promises that God has a wonderful plan with a problem-free life of happiness. Literally millions have had false conversions because of this unbiblical gospel and have fallen away and become bitter or disillusioned. But many stay within the church as false converts and will be sorted out on Judgment Day. Those who preach a wonderful plan with the promise of a happy, problem-free life are not being faithful to the scriptures and are filling our churches with false converts. You will get away with it. You'll not get caught. Would you do it? Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to pass. I'm, I'm a Christian, so, you know, we don't get out like that. You just told me you'd steal $2 million. <laughs> Would you take the money? <laughs> uh, yeah. But, well, the Lord knows my heart. Have you been born again? Yes, I have. Are you born again? Yes, sir. People that believe in Jesus Christ will go to heaven because he was here to forgive us of our sins. Do you have a fear of God? Yes, sir. So you just have to trust in Jesus? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Are you a Christian? I'm a Christian. I ask God to come into my life. I am a born-again Christian. I accepted him as my Lord and my Savior. Are you living in holiness? Yes, sir. So are you living in holiness? I'm not perfect, honey. I'm just forgiven. Are you living in holiness? I, I, I try to. Are you a good person? I consider myself a good, I have good karma. Do you think you're a good person? Yes, sir. You got a good heart? Yes, sir. Are you a good person? For sure. You're gonna make it to heaven? Absolutely. On a scale of one to 10, how would you say you are with your Christian walk at the moment? I'd say it's about four. Probably a six. Been drinking a little bit backsliding, but it's okay. Do you read your Bible? Sure, almost every day. I think I'm a good person. Well, not every day, maybe once a week. Are you having sex out of marriage? Yes. I'm backsliding right now. I still think you're a good person? I think I'm a good person. Okay, now here's, here's a dilemma for you. In Mark 10, verse 17, Jesus said, there's none good but God. Was Jesus wrong? No. So do you still think you're a good person? I have work to do. Yeah. See, what I'm doing this for is I've taken you through the moral law, the Ten Commandments, to bring a knowledge of sin so that you could be genuinely sorry for your sins so you could find a place of biblical repentance. Our churches are filled with people that are strangers to genuine repentance because they've never had the law applied to their conscience. Those commandments haven't shown them how exceedingly sinful sin is. They've never seen their own true sin in its true light and never fully repented and trusted in Christ. Consequently, Many of them on Judgment Day will cry out, Lord, Lord, and he'll say, Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Are you a cross-dresser? Yes. And you're a Christian? Right. I do not read my Bible anymore. Do you think marijuana should be legalized? Yes. Absolutely. You're smoking it now? Yes, I am. Have you been drinking? I have been drinking a little bit. We accept homosexuals. As and they don't have to change? No. Now, Jesus said, if you look at a woman and lust after her... I love it. You commit adultery with her in that's your heart. That's true, that's true, but uh, it happens. There are a lot of Christians I know who, who are this way, they've accepted themselves this way, and, and God loves them just as much. So you're drinking I'm, with the drunken. Sure, sure. I enjoy cross-dressing. Your language was terrible when I first spoke to you. Sure, yeah, of you think you could? Is. You think you could be a false convert? A false convert? Ooh. Jesus spoke of that. Well, have you ever thought about this? There's such a thing as idolatry where we shape a God to suit ourselves. I did it before as a Christian. I shaped a God to suit my sins. And that's a scary place to be in where you believe in God, but you don't obey him. You're not living in holiness, playing the hypocrite. And so, gambling. I, yeah, gambling with your very life. So I plead with so, you, get right with God today. I admire what you're doing. Well, thank you so much. The Bible says, do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves will inherit the kingdom of God. When John Lennon's murderer was at a parole hearing, the media reported, quote, 
he has a deep relationship with Christ that started when he was in a Christian camp at age 16. The killer said, When Mr. Lennon passed me, I turned, pulled out my weapon and shot him in the back. I emptied the revolver. I was a Christian before I committed my crime. Now wait a minute. If you call yourself a Christian and yet you lie, steal, take illegal drugs, blaspheme, or you're into fornication, pornography, or adultery, you need to do what the Bible says and examine yourself to see if you're in the faith. Christians not only read God's Word regularly, they obey it. They live in holiness, and they certainly don't go around murdering people. An atheist once said that imagine is an anthem for atheism, but think about it for a moment. If I said imagine there's no New York, it's easy if you try, I'm saying that New York is a real place, but let's imagine or pretend that it isn't. So the song is actually acknowledging the existence of heaven and hell as real places. In his interview with Playboy magazine, John explained what imagine is all about. He said, it is the concept of positive prayer. If you can imagine a world at peace with no denominations of religion, not without religion, but without this my God is bigger than your God thing, then it can be true. Even though John Lennon's religious views may have varied over the years, it seems that his real contention may not have been with heaven or hell, whatever he may have conceived them to be, or with countries or religion, possessions or wars, but rather with wicked people who cause wars over possessions and countries in the name of their religion. Whatever the case, the time will come when God himself will stop all evil and will usher in the reality where the world will live as one. Make sure you're part of that coming kingdom where peace will have a chance and where God's will will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. Millions of us are waiting for the day when the lion will lie down with the lamb. I hope someday you'll join us. Even better, I hope that today you'll join us because as John said in his last interview, tomorrow only comes for us if God is willing. Did you know that the Beatles have sold more than 2,303,500,000 record albums? Did you also know that back in June of 2012, they hit number one on iTunes? That every year since 2005, John Lennon's Imagine has been played just before the New Year's ball drop in Times Square. That it was played during the 1996 and 2004 Olympics, as well as the 2006 Winter Olympics opening, and in London at the 2012 closing ceremony. Little did they know that when they opened with Paul McCartney and closed with John Lennon, with two billion people watching, that they were preparing the way for genius. DVDs are just $1.50 each at livingwaters.com or by calling 800-437-1893. Please consider getting them in bulk and giving them out to this dying generation. Permission is given for public screenings of genius.